Welcome to Tulane, Teller of Tales. And as far as our opening hand goes, yes, this is uh, this is me getting ready to keep this hand. I love it. If we get Arbor Elf, we have Noble, we have Werebear, and um, we have a Thran Dynamo option to uh, ramp a little bit, and we do have a Heroic Intervention. So uh, hopefully we can make Eli happy uh, by uh, using that in a timely fashion. So <laughs> let's have Forrest to enter the battlefield. Yeah, that'll be good. And I guess we end up going for Noble. Yeah, I kind of like that. So we'll have Forrest enter the battlefield. Um, that'll keep us open on mana. Um, so let's have Noble enter the battlefield and then anything else. No, we're going to go and pass the turn over to our opponent. We're playing Chu Lane, Teller of Tales, Vigilance. Whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. Um, then you may put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. And um, then for a three mana activation, return target creature you control to its owner's hand. And we'll cover Sorak, uh here in just a second. So um, do we want to dump all these creatures out? That is the question. Yeah, I kind of don't know, because that'll be a quick chew lane. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like that. That sounds pretty good. All right, so we'll have Island into the battlefield. Let's have Werebear come down. Uh, he is pumped. He's really excited to be a druid. Me too, man. Uh, let's have Green come down. Werebear is probably my one of my favorite magic cards. Uh, let me get, I got to think about that one. Um, and then anything else, pass it over to our opponent. I'll kind of explain that here in a second once we get done with all the uh, beginning of the video stuff. So I'm um, playing against Ciroc, Dragon Claw, Flash. This spell can't be countered. Creature spells you control can't be countered. Then other creatures you control have trample. So um, we did cover both commanders. Let's give a quick shout out to our sponsors, MTGO Traders. Now, if you want to go to, over to the, uh, oh, <laughs> oh, 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 that hurt. Oh, whew, that hurt. All right, so we'll go Scalding Tarn and then anything else will pass. Oh, that was so cool. There's just sometimes a magic where you get down something like that and... <laughs> you know, you don't think you're going to extend into a board wipe like as quick as turn two, but hey, that happens sometimes. Uh, but yeah, if you want to head over to the library to MTGO Traders, we've got Chu Lane. Um, he's got a library set up. It's Dear Day, and he's going to tell you the tale of all three druids who got hit with a sudden demise. So if you want to hear that story, head over to MTGO Traders. Pretty cool, huh? And uh, <laughs> let's see, run into Ghostway. A little bit late to the party. Um, anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn. Oh, man, that. Whew, that hurt. Man, this game was about to just take off. But yeah, you know, that's that's magic sometimes. That's how removal goes. Um, but yeah, let's give a quick shout out to inkgaming.com. If you use coupon code JOLT, you get 10% off anything off the website. Do we want to delay that as a way of frustration? Yeah, I guess we could delay that. I mean, if they're brainstorming main phase right now, they're probably trying to hit a land drop. I kind of like going for this. We're going to go delay. Um, they can't counter it. That's hopefully going to stop them making a land drop. I, I would assume that's what they're going for. If they're going to delay, they're trying to, oh, misdirection. Okay, excuse me, Mystic Snake. Um, this is going to go on through. So um, <laughs> this is playing against our opponent, Lara Bia. Um, they tend to, uh, these matches tend to be pretty, pretty interesting sometimes. So there's a, it's kind of like playing against uh, the, uh, the boogeyman, you know, there's always very, uh, I guess, a competitive commander is what you want to call it. So, but yeah, be sure to check out inkgaming.com. And last but not least, I started a Patreon. So if you'd like to contribute to the Patreon, there's a link down in the description below. Uh, if you want to support cool content like this, you can get your name at the beginning or the end of the credits or both. And if you can't do that, hey, uh, no problem. Just tell somebody about the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Now it's officially free time. We can have some fun. But yeah, Tulane, he's going to be telling the uh, the bardic tale of the, uh, the three little mana dorks who... It got wiped out. They had a sudden demise, and it was very, very sad for everybody involved. All right, so we don't run into another land. Um, I guess at this point, we just go ahead and pass the turn. I think that'd be good. Uh, kick it back over to our opponent. So if we do run into another land, that does put us on Thran Dynamo. That we can go Rashmi. We will be able to get some good stuff going. But, uh, oh, man, there's uh, <laughs> you can't get mad because... Think about it. If we're the, our opponent, we have a sudden demise into three mana dorks. You're just like salivating at the mouth. <laughs> like, yes, let me just hit them for one quick damage really, really quick. So, and we also might, you know, that's the other thing is we can see all the amount of spot removal over there. So we're almost, it, it, I get, you know, even then, you know, on turn two, you don't really feel like you're extending into a board wipe. Um, <laughs> not leaving up counter All right, so we hit a land for the turn. There we go. Right, let's go ahead and crack. Uh, scalding Tarn. We're going to grab a uh, white source off of this Scalding Tarn. Let's grab Tundra. Um, we'll have uh, Thrandynamo. Yeah, we need to get ahead on mana very, very badly. So we're going to have Thrandynamo come down. 
Um, and we know that this uh, Mystic Snake got exiled, so we're going to cross that off. So hopefully our opponent's kind of low on resources, maybe. That's something we can kind of wish for, so um, we'll see. Uh, we do have at least three mana, and we'll have two mana available if we end up going for two lanes. So the good thing is, um, well, actually, no, it'll be kind of weird because we have three in Dynamo. And that'll be the extra color for Heroic Intervention. So we might end up going for Rashmi. We'll see exactly how we want to end up going for this. So hopefully they're low on resource and we get some more stuff going on our side. And uh, I was so excited. Well, yeah, I'll go and talk about Werebear. Yeah, I love Werebear. Werebear is one of my favorite magic cards. I just, I love that it's a druid. I love how excited he is to be a like a mana dork druid. And... Um, yeah, and the fact that when you get Threshold, like, I don't know, I feel like it's pretty cool. I, I feel like Werebear is kind of like, I feel like Werebear is the first flip card before it was a flip card, because it has Threshold, and it gets plus three, plus three, and then it turns into a bear. So um, I can definitely see Werebear being a, uh, oh, what is it, Innistrad card right now. I think that's, all right, opponent's going to wreck Sage uh, into into that Thran Dynamo. Um all right, that was us completely tapping out for that, too. So let's go waste. And I guess at this point, yeah, I mean, if they've got spot removal on two lanes, so be it. And at this point, we've just got to generate some sort of value. So um, let's have two lane enter the battlefield and then uh, anything else pass back over to our opponent. So um, that does put us into Rashmi. We've been catching a card draw. Um, they're not making their land drop, so we'll, we'll see what else they've got in the hand. Um, I feel like if they had counter magic, they would have left it up, and they're only stuck on one blue source, and that's going to be Steam Mint. So um, if we can take advantage of them being bottlenecked on mana, um, we will certainly take it. So, you know, just simply just maybe having two lane on the battlefield and um, being able to go for Rashmi. Um, that's a pretty good feeling. All right, so opponent finally does kind of crack that open. They do hit a wooded foothills, and they have peak on top of their library. So um, if they pass the turn with an open two lane, I feel pretty decent about this. So um, let's go for Rashmi. And let's do this. Um, we're going to go ahead and shock in Hollowed Fountain. Yes, because we want to leave up Heroic Intervention as badly as possible. So um, we'll go Tundra. Actually, let's sequence it this way. Um, we're going to go, we'll tap down colorless, colorless. That way we're not forcing ourselves to take some damage off of this. And, well, either way, we're going to have to leave up a green source. We will end up having to take a little bit of damage. So um, let's do it like that. So there we go. I'm just trying to make sure that we're sequencing everything as uh, correctly as possible. So let's have Rashmi enter the battlefield. That's going to be two lane. That's going to allow us to cash in an extra card draw. Um, Beast Whisper. Oh, that's good. We definitely want to get some card advantage going. Um, so we have uh, Rashmi enter the battlefield. And then actually with Heroic Intervention, it does work out with Rashmi uh, because we do have the opportunity to maybe run into a Mana Dork. So kind of like this. Well, we'll see what's going on. Our opponent does have Peak on top of their library. So they're going to draw into that. And that will be a cantrip. So the uh, the funny business that we're trying to get down on our opponent will be uh, foiled uh, once we see that heroic intervention. But I do like having it because, as you can see, uh, we got hit with sudden demise. We got hit. With, um, we saw sweltering suns in the graveyard. So there are some um, there's some spot removal or at least some mass removal on our opponent's side of the battlefield. So that's something we want to keep in mind. Now they're simply just going to go ahead and pass the turn. We might see peak during our upkeep uh, potentially. Ooh, and then Leafkin Druid. So we've got, yeah, well, let's just kind of slow roll some of this value out. So let's go Leaf Kindred. Um, that's going to be a Rashmi trigger. I guess we just, yeah, let's sequence it this way. We, that way if we hit a lane off two lane or something, we can dump it with two lane. Or off Rashmi, we can dump it with two lane. So um, we're going to draw a card. Let's put Temple of Enlightenment onto the battlefield. Let's get the Scry, the Scurry, the Fever, the Insanity. Paradise Druid will... Do we want to put that on top? With I'm not going to be able to hit that with Rashmi, but that's going to give us some extra mana. I think I kind of like that. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so it's going to go on top. We're going to have a Paradise. Uh, which one is this one? This Leafkin Druid into the battlefield. And I guess we just go Harvester Druid. Yeah, because we just don't want to completely tap. No, if we go Harvester Druid, we're going to tap out on green mana. So um, at this point, we're simply just going to go and pass the turn over to our opponent. So uh, we know that Mana Dork is on top of our library. Uh, we do have a couple different options to kind of survive something from our opponent. Uh, we do have Ghostway, and we do have Heroic Intervention. So we do have two ways to kind of fog out any sort of uh, funny business from our opponent. Um, that'll be Ghost Wave, and that'll be some Enter the Battlefield effects that we can get down. And then Heroic Intervention is going to be able to protect our board state because... Um, if you're building Chulane, um, especially, you know, let's say that you're coming across this video, you built the Chulane Brawl deck, or 
you've been playing Brawl with your buddies, and uh, you, you want to turn it into a commander deck, uh, one thing that you definitely want to do at Tulane is you want to run protection for your board state. Um, that's going to be Heroic Intervention. That's going to be Ghost Way. And yeah, that's fine. We'll let them kind of go for peak. So this will be an interesting kind of cat, cat and mouse game uh, between our opponent and I, trying to figure out how we're going to sequence this uh, Heroic Intervention. So... Um, because we know with them going for, I, I know our opponent, they, they play pretty tightly. So that'll be kind of fun for us to, uh, hopefully see if we can get this heroic intervention to stick. So, uh, but yeah, if you're thinking about building Tulane, one thing that you definitely want to do is really make sure that, uh, you protect your board state, heroic intervention, ghost way, um, stuff like Simic charm that give your creatures, your permanents hex proof. Um, when you're building this Tulane, you know, your board state is your investment. You need to get a lot of creatures. To, oh, Okay, did they draw into it? Did they hit Kiki G? Are we about to get comboed out? <laughs> we'll see. That was Pestermite on top of their library. This might be Sorok Splinter Twin, which is a very, hey, much, a lot of respect to our opponent. That's uh, Kiki Jiki. They can't get down Kiki Jiki and Pestermite, because that's going to be one, two, three. Well, actually, they, they can combo off. They can combo off with, um, if we see Pestermite come down, and they've got Splinter Twin in the hand. That'll be combo. So let's see. Glenalinda. And then they can sacrifice it. Okay, that's, I mean, we've got some stuff we can do. Pestermite's on top, so um, we do need to watch out for Splinter Twin. But they might be just kind of setting up the safety valve of Splinter Twin. So, and with Tulane, whenever we cast a creature, there's nothing that we can really, if we wanted to go Ghost Way, but then that puts us in a position to where they might be able to cash in some spot. And they know what's in our hands, so we might as well not just go Ghost Way. So, yeah, I don't really like doing that. All right, so we run into Paradise Druid. So if we do Paradise Druid, that'll turn on Leafkin Druid for extra mana. So, yeah, let's go Paradise Druid. Uh, we're going to get that down. That's going to be, oh, dang it, I meant to sequence it a different way because we know what's on top. Oh, Sky Shot Climb. Yeah, that, that's fine. Uh, I'm not going to put a lane from our hand on the battlefield. Let's go Rashmi. Uh, Crafty trigger. It's going to be worn power. So we're going to Paradise Druid enter the battlefield. And that does turn on Leaf Kin Druid for two green mana. So at this point, we can't go Beast Whisper. But let's just go. Yeah, because I like having access to double board protection. Let's go Harvester Druid. And this is an interesting game so far because we're able to dodge Glenalindra. And I'm not going to put a land onto the battlefield. Run into another mana dork. So we're going to have... Look at this art on Harvester Druid. How good this card... Oh, I love that art. Looks good. Um, yeah, let's just go and pass the turn to our opponent. So, I mean, if we get comboed out, we get comboed out. But um, with us having five open mana, it really does complicate our opponent trying to go for a board state. They're going to have to leave up double blue activation for Glenalindra. So I kind of like creating this weird situation to where we might end up having to fight over heroic intervention and ghost way um now since we do have leafkin druid online for double green mana we're going to try our best to go for beast whisper because once we get down beast whisper that's really going to allow us to start cashing in a lot of card advantage and our opponent does have counter spell um on top of their library so that's something that uh, we do want to keep in mind now uh, thankfully right now um they don't have any sort of way to um counter they can't cash in a card draw right now, so uh, that's something that uh, is to our advantage. But once they do draw in a counter spell, I'm going to try my best to kind of keep this in mind, um, what they're drawing off the top of their library. But to be perfectly honest, if you if something happens in the game like, oh, Joel, why didn't you remember that they drew into this eight turns ago? It's really hard to write, deliver commentary, and think about what sort of board progression we're going to try to get and keep track of our opponents top of their library uh with course of crucifix so it's just kind of one of those something has to give and uh, keeping track of every single thing that's on top of our opponent's library is hard to deliver commentary at the same time so um that's pretty much why so let's go for leaf kindred and um, that's going to be double green let's kind of tap down a few of these uh, blue sources because we're doing pretty good on that so let's have uh have old beast whisper enter the battlefield and I guess it doesn't really matter how we stack these triggers. Cast a creature spell, draw a card, and then put a land from your hand on the battlefield. We don't have a land, so um, let's put Tulane on the stack first. That way, if we rip a land off Rashmi, that might be a little bit to our advantage. Um, Guilt Leaf. Oh, Arch Druid. Oh. <laughs> uh, we don't have a land. Do we have four untapped druids? I think we do. So let's go for Guilt Leaf Arch Druid. Uh, we're going to have Beast Whisper enter the battlefield. They're going to have to have counter magic for this Guilt Leaf Arch Druid. If not, they're going to gain control of all of their lands. Um, let's. And do, yeah, we do have enough mana for it. 
Oh, goodness. Let's see if this is going to stick. I love going for this line of play. All right, that's going to be uh, Beast Whisperer. That's going to be Tulane. Let's see if this is good. We are... No, we still have Heroic Intervention, too. And we can still... Gank, yeah, because tap... No, we have to tap seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, excuse me. I was thinking it was four, which is not that good. All right. Uh, so we're not going to put a lane onto the battlefield. We don't have a lane to go for. And, oh, yeah, we... Okay, I got really excited for a second. Sorry, but I thought it was just four druids, but it's seven druids. Um, Horizon Canopy is going to enter the battlefield. So we've got one, two three, four, five, six. We've got six total druids. We're going to have to tap down two double druids to get that. Okay, so that's going to be Priest of Titania, which is going to be really nice. But that's going to be, that's going to cut us off Ghostway or even Heroic Intervention. So, mm, man, I got, man, I thought Guilt Leaf was four untapped druids. That would be really busted if it was. But um, we'll see if we survive until next turn. Okay. We're going to try our best. Uh, we've got Ghostway, and we do have um, Heroic Intervention available. So I think at this point, we don't want to lose any Druids on our side. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go and pass the turn. And uh, we'll get rid of, I think, just Worn Power Stone. I don't think that's exactly what we'd end up going for. Pa you know, if, if they've got the combo, they've got it. You could see how insanely close we got to Guilt Leaf Arch Druid. Um, I just got, are they going to tap down um, Harvester Druid? Which I think is okay. Yeah, I mean, that still puts us on Heroic Intervention. Yeah, that's fine. So we're going to tap down Druid. Um, we could add that mana to our mana pool, but that's that's fine. So we'll pass it over to our opponent's turn. So with them having Pester Mine on the battlefield, um, let's see what's in store for us. But um, that's one of the cool things about running Chu Lane, is that there are so many Druids um, that are mana dorks. Um, then you also have some really good utility creatures like Rashmi, and if you're keeping score at home, Tulane is a druid himself. So uh, you just toss in your mana dorks. That's going to allow you to get ahead on mana. That's going to allow you to... All right, Pona's going to go for Splinter Twin. And there is nothing that we can do about it. So unfortunately, they're going to be able to get it. We did get into this weird position to where, like, good game to our opponent. You know, I love a good Splinter Twin combo. So shout out to our opponent. Uh, we're going to go and scoop this one up. If you don't know what's going to happen, um, what's gonna, they're going to get Splinter Twin on the Pester Mite, and they're just going to make a million copies of Splinter Twin and close the game out. Um, you can see how excited I got about Guilt Leaf Arch Druid because it is such a fun way to win. Uh, tap 7, untap Druids you control, gain control of all lands, target player controls. Um, that's pretty much good. It basically reads, um, you win the game. Tap 7 Druids. So um, I got really excited that we had 4 Druids, and you can see we actually had six open druids to tap down with guilt leaf but unfortunately our opponent's going to get on this one with the splinter twin combo um if we had some sort of we'd almost have to have croson grip to stop the combo because they have glenelindra out there sacrifice to uh, counter target non-creature spell um but you can see how you know just simply running druid tribal it's not that costly it's not like we're building this wacky deck toss in code coat of arms toss, uh, toss in the guilt leaf thing you can get control of your opponent's lands and then you can uh, get some really good stuff going on your side but good game to our opponent it's always fun to play against splinter twin and you got to see what we're trying we also had crater hoof coming down potentially next turn so um you got a pretty good showing of what chun lane's trying to do but if you enjoyed the video you enjoyed the druid tales hey like and subscribe thanks bye